team of the state of Arizona, I declare this gathering to be a violation of ARS 13-1502-A1. A mess. That's how deputies are referring to the law enforcement response to this pro-Palestinian protest at ASU in Tempe four months ago. Dozens of demonstrators got arrested after repeated warnings to disperse and leave. The campus chief of police set to retire next week amid two ongoing investigations into complaints of how he handled that protest. He's been on paid leave since May and new tonight, Arizona's Family Investigates has new insight from a series of emails and text messages. Amy Cutler reports. The emails and text messages are from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office leadership, ASU police reaching out to them for assistance, transporting protesters they plan to arrest. They gathered in front of Old Main back in late April. To protest the Israel Hamas war, calling on ASU to stop doing business with companies that support Israel. But as day turned to night and students refused to leave, police planned to move in asking MCSO for help transporting those they'd arrested. The Department of Public Safety, or DPS, also called in. Arizona's family investigates obtaining text messages. MCSO leadership sent one another commenting on the situation. Chief Michael Dawson with the Custody Bureau writing, ASU has been hiding on the side while DPS does the work, and we provide the resources. Proud MCSO moment, not the best for them. And then later, as I have been listening, I am confused. I thought this was an ASU incident. Deputy Chief Frank McWilliams with the Patrol Resources Bureau texted, I guess Tempe backed down due to ASU want to sweep in and arrest everyone without a plan and didn't want to get into a blank show. Is that surprising to you? It unfortunately isn't surprising because I've seen it in other jurisdictions. Michael Janako is a police practice expert and has helped other universities review their own policies in the wake of these protests. What we have seen, unfortunately, is not enough planning um, about what that mutual aid is going to look like and um, not enough real thought on what the mission ends up and should end up being. Um, and then a lot of confusion uh, once there is deployment from those outside agencies. These text messages reveal ASU police waited, pushing back the time they planned to move in as they looked for campus leaders to make decisions, something Chief Dawson noted. All that to say is we are monitoring the 24-hour clock and staying on them, but it continues to be a bit of an amateur hour. Janako said it was clear campus police were not prepared for what unfolded. I think there needs to be more discussion up front about what the goals and objectives are. In May, the 71 protesters arrested had their charges dismissed. Janako wasn't surprised by that either and says as ASU looks to hire a new police chief, it should also be reviewing its policies to ensure they're better prepared moving forward. Now, in response to our questions, ASU said their Office of General Counsel continues reviewing the actions related to the removal of the encampment on the alumni lawn in April. ASU will provide an update on its findings after the review is complete. They couldn't tell us when that would be. Amy Cutler, Arizona's Family Investigates.